Hello Mighty Morphing Mates. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy. Welcome to Ralphie Review 914 Extras. Just a quickie. Um, because I've just recently reviewed... Hang about. And thank you to Afram CCT, Afram CCT, for that mock mention. <laughs> I've just been reviewing Port Charlotte 10 year old bottled at 50% in Ralphie Review 914. And it's a damn good single malt, and I recommend you buy it. Simple as. I scored it 90 out of 100. Now, there's something I want to tell you about this score, and there's something I want to tell you about this bottle. And it's something that many of you are aware of, but I want to really highlight it to bang it home, is that this review is in 2022. Now, if this review was in 2018, when I reviewed a previous version of this bottle, it never scored 90, it scored 86, because it wasn't as good. Simple as that, it was not as good. Put that out of the way there a safe place where it won't smash. So I can put them all marks away now, they've served their purpose. And as I kind of occasionally glance back towards 2009 when I started, I look at reviews, early reviews for whiskies which I now hesitate to buy and yet then, um, 12 years ago, they were really good and I was impressed by them. My obvious example would be... Um, <laughs> what's that one? Winter, this Winter's Gold comes is a version of this particular distillery. It's up beyond Pit Lochery, and it's a wee white building in a very, very windswept place. And I know the name, and I'm trying to remember the name, but I can't remember, I just can't remember it. It's gone. It's just totally gone. Can't believe this. Anyway, you know what it is because you're a malt mate and you've guessed it. And when I, I, I reviewed this whiskey as a 15 year old, I was really impressed with it. I gave it a high mark. And then I bought a bottle five years later and it was nice enough, but it wasn't the same. And the reason being the casks weren't the same. The casks were inferior and you could taste it in the whiskey. Um, and then a little bit later, um, I had a taste from a friend who asked my opinion and said, you know, you, you reviewed this and you gave it a really high mark, but I wouldn't give it anywhere near that. And I said, well, stop right there because you're reviewing it now. I was reviewing it then. See, even in the space of a couple of years, some distilleries are losing their reputation for quality other distilleries are building and growing their reputation for quality and the common factor that affects both is the cask policy. It's nothing else, it's just the cask policy. Some distilleries are spending proportionally more on better quality casks and on their wood than others. Others, Dalwhinnie. <laughs> it's Dalwhinnie. Thanks. Thanks for shouting at me. Thanks for letting me know. I heard you mock mates. Dalwini 15 year old. I really used to love that. As a lowland single malt drinker, it was a really good Highland whiskey. But now I wouldn't even buy it. I wouldn't buy any version of Dalwini because I don't want to be disappointed. And I don't want to be spending my money and risking the disappointment when there are other whiskies out there like Arden Murkin and Tora Vig and Aaron which I know, and Deanston and Bonabin, which I know are going to give me better returns. Why should I even take the risk these days? Why should I? And it's because things do change. And I know some of you, you'll look at a review, and you may not initially spot when I have reviewed it, but when, and, and you say, well, hang about. Ralphie's rated this so highly or he's not rated this so well, but I'm tasting it and I think it's great or I think it's terrible. And it's because of time sensitivity. The internet's still fairly recent, but even in that fairly, in, in, in the space of a decade, we're seeing dramatic rises in reputations in some distilleries and falls in reputations in some distilleries. But they all put their prices up. 
Some do so modestly. Some do so in with sensitively. Others just bang the price up dramatically, shockingly. And it's a turn off because it should be. When you see it happen, just don't buy, walk away. It is better you walk away from a high priced whiskey than spend the money and have your disappointment in the smell and the taste compounded even worse by the money that you were persuaded to spend on it. Nothing, malt mates, nothing is worth more then you're prepared to pay for it. It doesn't matter what the marketing people say. Oh, this is worth £200, £300, £500, £5,000, £100,000 for a bottle of single malt whiskey. Bullshit. Bullshit. When you spend that money, it's nothing to do with the whiskey anymore. It's to do with a tangible asset collectability in the same manner of fine art and that all is it's all prompted and it's all valued through pretension delusion and bullshit <clears throat> every whiskey review is time sensitive our palettes too are time sensitive even t it used to be with before the internet it would take you even 10 years to get a half decent palette with whiskey but now with the internet, you can get a very decent palette for whiskey within two or three years. With the variety of what you experience, the patience, the practice, the perseverance and the benefit of tuning in and seeing what people have to say. Whether it agrees with your opinion or disagrees, it doesn't matter, mop mates. It's the journey. It's all about the journey and the journey is taking place over time. And be aware of the changes. Respond, react and be ready for these changes because they will help you to find better whiskies where you didn't expect them and to let go whiskies which used to be a favourite of yours but now they're just letting you down. Simple as that. I'm Ralphie and the Bothy having a dram. Peated stuff, very nice. I'm wondering now, should I buy a couple of bottles in case the quality goes downhill? in five or ten years. Perhaps even sooner, I don't know. Decisions, decisions. Bye, mates.